Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And we have a lot to talk about. I hope you were all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are out there in the world. Recently, we saw a big post by not only Swift, but also even uh, with the BIS included and City. Now, this was at the BIS Innovation Summit just recently, and we have how can we enhance existing financial infrastructure in a world of technological innovation? That was the central question our chief innovation officer discussed at the BIS Innovation Summit uh, with the head of the BIS, Toronto Innovation Hub Center, and also the Emerging Payments and Business Development at Citi. The panel covered a lot of ground from potential paths forward for a universal shared ledger to the latest developments in digital assets and the need to fully understand the transformative impact of AI when designing digital infrastructures. Now, as you guys do see here on the uh, list, you have City with Swift, with the BIS, and also even uh, with you know a few other players. Now, outside of this post, do you guys remember this about six months ago? Yeah, it's uh, from Money 2020, New Rails to New Worlds, Building Inclusive Innovative Infrastructures for Global Payments, featuring an all-female panel from Swift, Ripple, and City. A panel of exceptional female leaders discuss what is being done on the ground in some of the most systemically important institutions and emerging fintechs to shape and implement next-generation cross-border payments infrastructures. How are instant and real-time payments operating now, and how will they in the future? How are the targets? set by the G20 for adoption of new technologies as well as ISO 2022 influencing the technology roadmaps for global organizations in 2023 and beyond? How has SWIFT positioned itself as the messenger of the future? And what does the likes of Citi's regulated liability network mean for the future of interbank cross-border transactions? So yeah, this is the head of payments at uh, Ripple. It's also the global head of payments and PMI go to market at SWIFT and also the head of digital assets at City. Very, very interesting topic here. I mean, new rails to new worlds, building the infrastructures of the future. Then we get this post, this is from May 7th. How can we enhance existing financial infrastructure in a world of technological innovation? And this is all from the ground up in terms of digital assets and how we can design these uh, digital infrastructures. This is literally how can we build inclusive, innovative infrastructures for global payments? It's literally the same exact topic. Now, obviously, Ripple's working with the BIS already on the CPMI group, which is the cross-border payments uh, market infrastructure. Again, really kind of just shows you where Ripple is in all of this. And then also ISO 2022, which we do know Ripple was at the forefront of. They were the first company with a blockchain-based technology around ISO 2022 standardization, which is very significant. Now, also remember this, right? We have Swift versus Ripple, messaging versus messaging. Big shout to XRP drops for this um, settlement. This is Tom um, Shock. I hope that I'm Shaq. I hope that I'm saying that name correctly. I'm probably not. Um, then also Navin Gupta. If Swift wants to fix payments for us, that's great. It's one less thing that we have to do. Check it out. Swift does messaging with a large data payload in the ISO 222 messages, but it doesn't do settlement. So the, the ultimate would be to bring these things together where you have messaging and settlement coming together, that who owns what machine working hand in hand with something you can transfer the, the large data payloads. So the thing that I would say is Swift is primarily a messaging layer. So it moves messages or information from point A to point B. Ripple has combined both messaging and settlement together in one single place, right? Which is tightly knit so that when a message move from point A to point B, also value moves alongside and the value is considered settled and it gets done. So you could send millions of $1 transaction or $5 transaction from institution A to institution B and they'll get delivered to the beneficiary account safely uh, and with with all the with almost zero errors and and an instant credit into the account so we are you can call it i mean in terms of network you can call it us as a swift like network but in terms of technology we are we are miles miles ahead and we are the modern age technology that has been built up and 
And just like Navin Gupta is saying, you know, they're miles and miles and miles ahead of what Swift is doing. They're years ahead of what Swift has been doing because Swift is only messaging. They don't have clearing and settlement. They don't have clearing and settlement. So they still need to fix that. So when we really look at that, right, Ripple is perfect fit for Swift. It's perfect fit for even City technically. And that's why we go back to this and we really look at it and it's like, well, realistically speaking, it would be in their best interest to tap into what Ripple is providing and what they are doing for payments and for settlement itself. Now, beyond this, remember all of the connections that Ripple does have. 500 plus payment partners and clients that are hooked in and ready to fully utilize the network on demand. An even more staggering amount are connected through the likes of Neom, Tranglo, etc. Big shout out to uh, Chad Steingraber for this image and for this breakdown. But when we look at this, right, it's so much bigger. Realistically speaking, when we are addressing any of these big names, when we're addressing the overall landscape of the Ripple network, we look at some of the other players that are tapped in with Ripple. And then we look at the connections as well. Like for an example, when we look at Accenture, they have a service on their website just titled blockchain. It's changing the future as we speak, but where do you start? Harness blockchain with real world applications from the leaders in DLT. Blockchain solutions for frictionless, the keyword there, frictionless, business. Now within this, we scroll down, we can see the capabilities. You have metaverse, blockchain for social impact, for supply chain, decentralized digital identity, financial services infrastructure, and then here are the alliances and partnerships that they do have. Ripple is a big one, but then you also have a few other ones. And also, by the way, if you go to the full partnership list, you could see all of the major names that are tied to the entire ecosystem around a center. This is where you see, you know, BlackRock on here. You have Apple, you have, you know, Microsoft, you have so many big names. And like, it, it's insane to me that, People don't look at some of these names like Accenture. And then you see like Finostra on here as well. And then you can kind of see the big picture. You can see that this is, you know, one of the largest domino effects out there because by being able to connect with Accenture, be, being a partnership, um, w w being in partnership with um, Accenture, y you have unlimited access to all of these other companies. You have a, a massive opportunity here um, of exposure. And when we look at this, we kind of build upon what we already know about Accenture and Ripple, right? So the blockchain financial services space is definitely one that we have been focused on because this is pertaining to what we know about Ripple and what Ripple is trying to focus on. And uh, within here, we get a breakdown, transforming financial services through capital markets and exchanges, central bank digital currencies, cross industry exchanges, tokenized digital assets, trade to settle, trade finance, um, even down here, we have the digital dollar projects exploring US CBDC through pilot projects. We already know that uh, Christian Carlo, who is on the digital dollar project, he celebrated and even supported Ripple all through the lawsuit. He celebrated when they won against the SEC where XRP was deemed not a security. Here we have CBDC discussions. Um, again, a little bit more of an insight there. I also, Accenture is also on the Digital Pound Foundation as well as I believe the Digital Euro Association, which both projects involve uh, Ripple on. Then as we scroll down, we are met with uh, some of the things that they have been discussing around payments, around modernization. Uh, for an example, the power of analytics in the digital asset economy, Tech Vision 2022, Meet Me in the Metaverse, the revolutionary or the revolution of money, payments with DLT, banking on blockchain, blockchain's potential starts with security, how to build trust in the digital you know, world. Like they're already preparing us for what's happening, what's coming. And yeah, it's all based on DLT. It's all based on blockchain. Even down here, you have real-time settlements on DLT because DLT is changing how everything works. This is real-time growth settlement token-based exchange, RTGS. We already know that Ripple has been at the forefront of our, our RTGS uh, revolution for so long. And even down here, we have RTGS systems with DLT and crypto cryptographically uh, secured tokenized payments help central banks improve efficiency and security. The process designed with SAP and R3 demonstrates the next stage of efficiency in payment systems. 
And uh, yeah, I mean, things are changing rapidly. If you're not paying attention to some of these big names like Accenture, you're missing out on a ton of information. Now, we've known about Accenture for years and years, um, but they just continue to grow, right? So under their, their about section, you are met with a lot of information, but down here is when you really see the substantial amount of adoption um, around Accenture already and how big their ecosystem is. 742,000 employees worldwide, 9,000 plus clients served across more than 120 countries, 350 plus partners in their ecosystem. And they are serving some of the largest banks, credit unions. I mean, these are massive giants. And then when you actually look at their partnership list, you can see some of these names and you're like, all right, well, they're partnered with this name and that name and those names are also partnered with, like, it's a massive domino effect. That's what I'm hinting at here, right? Because you look at just one of these names on this list and you could tie it back to 10, 15, 20, 100, 1,000 plus names like Finostra, right? Like, we've talked about Finostra on multiple occasions. You go to their partnership list, right? Or they're just um, about section, actually. Just go to their about section. Like Finostra is a name that's a perfect example because under here, we know that they have 8.1 thousand customers from global banks to credit unions. And that's just one name tied to Accenture that also has 9,000 names tied to it. So think about the, the overall um, exposure that you have when you're tied to just one of these big names. Like it's crazy. But beyond that, the reason why I bring up Accenture and the reason why I bring up the fact that they are partnered with Ripple is because Swift and Accenture back in 2021 of May, so roughly, you know, now three years ago, Swift and Accenture published joint paper on central bank digital currencies in cross-border payments. This was a huge deal. And it's all based around CBDC initiatives, around discussions with CBDC settlement. Um, and the reason why I bring this up again and the reason why I talk about it is because you know, CBDC initiatives have always been the topic that really kind of Ripple's been tied to. And what's even crazier is this is 2021. This is May of 2021. This is from Swift and Accenture. Uh, Accenture is a partner of, you know, Ripple. And if we go back six months ago, we know that the head of payments at Ripple, Swift, and even City were in a discussion around the new rails to new worlds, building inclusive, innovative infrastructures for global payments. And then guess what we just got? We just got this. April 2024, a full report on modernizing financial markets with wholesale central bank digital currencies in collaboration with Accenture from the World Economic Forum. And right there in front of you, you have James Wallace, Ripple X and Ripple, central bank engagements and CBDCs. There's a few other players on here, right? You have Swift, Hyperledger, the DTCC, I know uh, Stellar was mentioned on here, Hedera was also mentioned, but those are the only three names, Hedera, Ripple, and Stellar. Focus on the much bigger picture. Everything around you is changing. Finance itself is changing. Money is changing. Ripple is a company that's tied to the entire realm of it, which exposes XRP to everything as well. People can say what they want. People can talk what they want to talk about. But at the end of the day, these connections matter. These discussions matter. It's just like, we just recently talked about this in a video, um, but you're either sitting at the table or you're on the menu. It is changing and it is happening all through a few spe spe uh, specific names, right? And these big names like, Swift, Accenture, Ripple, City. Like, it's crazy to me um, that they're having these open meetings, these open discussions. And if you're not focused on it, you're distracted. You're distracted by something that doesn't really matter. Like, these are major changes happening. I see so many people get caught up in just scrolling endlessly through social media. You know, you guys, I, I, I really commend all of you that watch these videos. I commend all of you that provide your time because not only is time extremely valuable, um, but you're focused on some very big things. You're focused on very important information that could ultimately solidify uh, not only your position in the grand scheme of things, but also your participation in the new financial system. Like 
by being invested into some of these projects, we have direct exposure to the new financial system. And when it comes to XRP with Ripple, I really do think that they are a part of this new financial system. There's no way in my mind um, they're not. They, they're, there's just no way that I'm seeing the fact that like they're not tied to this because through all the connections that we know, through all the partnerships and uh, partnership announcements, through all the PDF files, the you know documents, Ripple is mentioned specifically around um, very big initiatives around payments, finance, and the internet of value. And even over here, by the way, we have from XRP drops, Davos 2024, Brad Garlinghouse with a message to the world. The theme of rebuilding trust is paramount. The theme of rebuilding trust is paramount. And I think that applies to crypto as well. Last year's a year with a lot of headwinds, some self-inflicted wounds. But I think as we rebuild trust with the ecosystem, with the major players, I think uh, the future is extremely bright. 2024 is going to be marked with uh, the, the reversion to kind of core first principles, recognizing that compliance in crypto in all financial services is very important. And I think to build that trust and to really scale into the opportunity that crypto represents, we have to have that compliance first mentality. The primary thing I'm looking forward to in Davos is staying warm. Uh, it's, it's definitely a cold year, a little more snow than previous years. Now, Davos always, I think, uh, stimulates ideas. I'm mostly thinking about the crypto industry and Ripple specifically, but certainly what's going on on a geopolitical basis and with climate are front and center here in Davos, which is obviously very important. The, th the theme of rebuilding trust. And remember, this is all around compliance first, being regulated, being at the forefront, because those that are taking the initiatives now to be, you know, compliant, to be regulated, um, they are going to be extremely, extremely uh, rewarded because they already have the infrastructure in place. They already worked with all of the regulators. They already became compliant at a time where clarity is not really a thing. So as we look at the SEC lawsuit, I always said that the SEC lawsuit is actually a huge benefit uh, for Ripple and for XRP. But beyond that, you know, remember who we're talking about here. We're talking about Ripple that's been around for well over a decade plus, that's been putting in the time, putting in the effort, building, um, and working with some of the largest names out there. And even when you look at some of these names that are tied to these initiatives like City, remember that City put out a full, um, it was like a full PDF file, an article, around the regulated internet of value guess who has been focused on the internet of value forever now ripple these discussions these connections we need to focus on them because everything around us is changing whether or not we want to admit it it's okay you don't have to um but to be blind and not see it when we connect the dots here and really kind of look at everything from a zoomed out view, like if we take a step back and really look at this, it's so clear. It's so clear that a new financial system is rising and, you know, winners and losers are being picked. And it's not around the regulatory side of things. Regulations, when we look at what the SEC is doing, it does not really matter to me. Look at the names that are on these documents. Look at the names that are on these PDF files. Look at the names that are tied back to the organizations that are making these major changes. Ripple is one of them. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on because more free content. If you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.